We're speaking to Luis Costa from the Alga Fuel Company, which uh, builds prototypes for using algae for carbon sequestration. Luis, can you explain a little bit about the type of work you're, uh, you're innovating? Yeah, absolutely. So basically, we have uh, uh, we are a company that develops technology for uh, big CO2 emitters. Uh, so these are companies like power plants and uh, cement plants, glass plants, and uh, clients like those. Uh, basically, we have a lot of technologies available. Uh, we actually uh, have to select the the most adequate technology for the, each client and uh, select which microalgae is the most appropriate. And uh, so we have uh, a sequential type of, of process with progressive scale-ups and we, we optimize all the technology, uh, all the process uh, in order for us to, uh, to be able to sequester as much CO2 as possible from these clients. So basically this is uh, advantageous for those clients because uh, we can uh, we can reduce their uh, their um, their budget in uh, in licenses for CO2 emission. You basically explained to us that your uh, prototype is running at a cement factory. So essentially, if I understand it correctly, what happens is they emit the CO2, and you use the the algae to trap the carbon, thus helping them to solve their uh, their their carbon trading problems and so on. Yes, that's right. Uh, basically, uh, the, this cement plant that, that is in Portugal uh, is our most advanced prototype at the moment. Uh, it's, it currently has a, a surface area of around uh, 1,000 square meters, and uh, we sequester uh, the CO2 from the flue gas that is emitted by the plant, and we use it to feed the, the microalgae uh, to, uh, to uh, sequester the CO2. During this year, and uh, as the Copenhagen Summit on Climate Change approaches at the end of the year, a lot of the emphasis on EU from EU policy has been on greening the, t greening the economy, green tech and so on. This seems to fit in very well with the type of work you're doing. Yes, exactly. So uh, in, in two ways, actually. So first of all, by, by fixating the CO2, and second, by using the biomass that we produce as uh, an alternative, a sustainable source uh, of biomass that can be used for uh, energy production or biofuel production as well. Can you explain how that works, how you convert it into energy? Yeah, uh, basically there are a lot of processes that are being developed uh, as we speak. Uh, we have uh, some projects in cooperation uh, with, with, uh, with some partners that develop the, these type of technologies. Some uh, are based on the, the use of the, the whole biomass uh, for production of, of biofuels. Others uh, actually uh, fractionate the, the biomass into different components and use them uh, individually as uh, a fuel, as a source, as a, a, a source for um, for biofuels, and actually uh, there are other other types of uses for uh, for biomass that are uh, uh, with higher added value. For example, the use of the the pigments, the use of the of the oils for uh, the food industry. Uh, even some components are useful for the pharmaceutical industry as well. Finally. How has this Innovation Days conference been beneficial for you? Have you met uh, potential partners or have you seen other projects with which you could collaborate, perhaps? Uh, yes, absolutely. We have had uh, many contacts of people who are interested in, in our work. And uh, I've actually uh, uh, d did my, my share of, of touring here and I found actually some very interesting uh, uh, companies that have some solutions that may be very adequate for us as well. Luis, thank you very much. Thank you.